Okay, everybody, it's the Cowboy Perspective. I'm, I'm super excited. Oh, man, I dropped my phone. <laughs> Hi, out there on YouTube land or in YouTube land, you're, if you're watching, uh, I'm, I appreciate you being here. We've got a guy named Josh Weathers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're impressive. I look up to you. Really? So I'm excited oh, to explore those those things, those reasons, your talent, all these things that are just kind of cool about your life. Highland mm. cattle and <laughs> the number 222 two, two yeah. and live like you mean it. Is yeah. that right? Love like, love you, mean like it, yeah. you mean it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where to jump off, but just say welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks and for having me. If you don't mind, two seconds for... I mean, I think it's going to be rare that my audience doesn't already know who you are, but maybe quickly, who who are you? Where'd you come from? And yeah, what well, do you do? Um, my name is Josh Weathers. I was born in Arlington, Texas, on Christmas Day, nineteen eighty-three, and uh, I have been playing music, I guess, all of my adult life. So I started when I was nineteen, freshman year of college. I got a guitar, found it in a buddy's garage. Uh, and started picking and started kind of writing songs. My dad bought me a new guitar as an early Christmas present that year. I turned 19, and uh, and then he, he kind of sat me down and told me to pers- you know, music was my thing, and if I wanted to take some time away from school to pursue it, then I had, like, all his blessing, you know. And then, you know, he didn't realize a month later he, he passed away, had a heart attack at work. Really? Yeah, and so I sort of took that to heart. You know, legitimately, like, okay, this is probably what I'm, I need to pursue this. Um, you know, and all that coming from my dad sat me down because I rodeoed all through high school and grew up around horses and cows and stuff yeah, like so that. So what'd your dad do? So my dad, he he was like the city boy, even though he's born in Brownwood and from Brownwood. Yeah. Um, you know, his dad was in the Air Force and traveled around a bunch, and so he lived overseas and lived in Palo Alto, California, and then. And then they moved back to Brownwood because my dad wanted to play football for Gordon Wood. Okay. Gordon Wood football was like big deal. He want he wanted to or he wanted you to. No, he wanted to. My dad. So this is my dad when he was in high school. Okay. So yeah. how did he how did he get his parents to move back to Brownwood? Well, the opportunity I think arose like so my my grandfather was a pilot. Okay. And he he had like the cool pilot job. He got to fly all the entertainment back and forth to Vietnam. Oh. And so, like, he became real good friends with. He flew Bob Hope back and forth all the time. Had to entertain Bob Hope, and he flew Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldridge around the world a couple times for all their USO stuff. And you know, he was that was his job. And so he he moved around a lot, which caused my dad to move around a bunch. But then they ended up back in Brownwood, and my pop flew private for some of like the heavy hitting money guys. They call them the Brownwood Mafia, which oh. still exists today. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to look into that. Yeah. See, that's another yeah. great piece of research for the cowboy perspective. To <laughs> yeah. do. What's the, who yeah. is the Brownwood Mafia? Yeah. What is the Brownwood yeah. Mafia? Yeah. They, you know, own car dealerships and stuff like that. But, I, you know, I'm not sure who's a part of that now, but they still, I guess they still are kind of hubs of the community there in, in Brownwood. Yeah. And, well, you mentioned Gordon Wood. Of course, he, he was part of that. was a, le- a, a legacy there. Yeah. And, uh, matter of fact, Brown was kind of coming back to their own, and they're having oh, some really? success in high school football. Wow! Again. So Stephenville kind of took that over, at least in that part of the country. And now Brownwood's coming back. Yeah. Well, that was that. That I mean, my dad was eat up with sports, and so um, I don't remember how we got on that topic. Oh, but you was just telling me where you <clears> come <throat> from, and then I jumped in and broke yeah. into the conversation. So now I, my next question is. Okay, so then how did you rodeo? Like, yeah, how so did you get into that? My dad's my dad's side of the family. My mother's side of the family uh, are all from like the east. E- well, just east of Hillsboro, there's an area there called Irene, Texas. So Irene, Malone, Hubbard, Coolidge, that whole area down there, which is like country people, yeah. you know. And so my gramps was like my hero, <clears throat> my grandpa, my my mom's side, and he was cowboy and always had horses and there was always stuff to do you know around the house and so i I basically spent even though we moved around a lot my dad's job he just worked for a distribution manager for different companies but his job moved us around a bunch and but every summer we spent in irene my brother and i would go there and stay with granny and gramps like all summer and so the majority of my childhood and most of my life was spent there yeah and uh like all of my family's buried in hubbard everybody's down there and uh 
Yeah, I mean, so I grew up, you know, just idolizing cowboy lifestyle and and watching pure country Man, every day with my gramps. You're the perfect guest for this show. <laughs> I mean, you have the cowboy perspective, and I'm, there's just a million things to explore in that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, the first question that comes to mind. Anyways, by the way, thanks for the little introduction. Sure. I think that yeah. gives the listeners all a good idea of your your. You're a valuable and valid cowboy perspective, mm-hmm. which I think everybody has one sure. in, in some way. Yeah. How have you found that this these times spent with your your pops mm-hmm. and your brother mm-hmm. have parlayed into valuable things in your music career or in mm. the other things you do? Yeah. Well, my gramps was like a real you know man of integrity, so he was just admired in their community around their church community around there he was the guy that go cut the grass you know on saturdays at the church and he would do the things that you know when nobody was looking right you know in that in that that's a cowboy perspective yeah yeehaw hey uh dave put a yeehaw in there because that's true your real character is what you're gonna do when nobody's looking that's right that's right yeah it's who you are in the dark you know when nobody's looking you gonna pick up that piece of trash when nobody's looking you know, and so those are things I learned from him, uh, and just watching him. He was the type of guy, you know, when he decided he smoked cigarettes for like ever because he worked at GM. So he, I mean, he smoked cigarettes for like thirty something years, you know, and then he switched to cigars. And so it was those uh, I don't can't even remember the name of that brand, but they're like orange and orange and yellow, and they got like a Mexican lady on the cover L. El Producto or something like that, yeah. you know, and he smoked those. And then one day he decided he was going to quit, and he just quit. And he never complained about it. Right. Never said a word about his cravings to smoke or anything like that. Never said a word about it. One day he decided he was going to quit cussing. And he didn't cuss much, obviously. He didn't have that bad of a mouth. But he decided he was going to quit cussing, so he just he substituted where he'd say cuss words for with vegetables. And so, like, he'd hit his thumb with a hammer. Oh, cauliflower. Oh, <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. And that, had, and then he just, I never heard him say another one. Yeah. I mean, it was just that's one of those a, things. It's like man, a mindset. A discipline. Mindset. Yeah. Discipline. Yeah. yeah. So how does that work in the in what you do? Well, Did I he mean. transfer that to you? Do you sure, have that? Sure. And, and there were other people probably as I got older that were very influential. I, I, I worked as a vet tech when I was in high school and that, and I was, you know, it was just like any other high school kid. I was rowdy and not afraid to get in trouble doing things I shouldn't do. And, yeah. But I worked for a guy named Dwayne Cannon and he was a large animal and small animal vet in, in Coleman and then moved to Mansfield and had a practice in Mansfield. And so I worked for him and another guy and he just became, especially when my dad passed away, he became like a second dad to my brother and I, and really just, he just wouldn't let up, like on us, making sure that we had, we knew how to succeed and how to have character and integrity and how be honest and dependable and well, things like that. We were just talking to Tom Morehouse, Bob yep. Morehouse, yep. and I was bringing up a story from a guy that sat here just earlier today, and I asked him, just tell me one story that comes to mind, and his dad happened to work with Tom mm-hmm. and he got to go like it would be three of those re- guys men yep. and a bunch of what they call buttons just young kids yep and they they worked them they yep. treated them like men expected them to show up yep. all those things are so really valuable yeah how do you yeah. do that with your kids today <clears throat> well i mean the same thing i mean our kids we discipline the kids and they we, you know, you can only do so, <laughs> That's so right. much you can do, uh, but, but you know, I think kids catch more than they're taught. I think they'll, you know, they more is caught than taught. Yeah. So it's just a matter of how mom and I walk it out in our everyday life, and the kids follow the same. You know, they they're pretty good at telling on each other too. And they look up to you like that's this de facto position you get to have. Yeah. Yeah. Or have to have. Yeah. You know your kids will look up to you and and even other people and you being the person you are a lot like i look up to you so you know there's a little bit of responsibility on you 
Yeah. Well, because you can do stuff I can't do. I think you, you take. You're nice enough to come sit down with mm. me. You're not. You're like you're. You're. Let's say kind of famous at least <laughs> yeah. maybe a lot. <laughs> you've funny. done some. You've yeah. done some stuff that yeah. most people won't get to do. Yep. And you still are a kind of a genuine, accessible. Well, that's human. part of that cowboy perspective that kind of gets ingrained in you. It's like humility. Yeah. You know, don't get above your raising, that kind of thing, that yeah. mentality. Like, you're not, that, I mean, I know as, as much as I enjoy performing and entertaining, singing, all that kind of stuff, there is always somebody better than you. Always. <laughs> and that, that, and that's, that's, and that is subject to like somebody's interpretation. Right. Opinion. Yeah, huh? Opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> like, somebody's always better than you. Somebody's always working harder than you, probably. You know, and and that's part of it. She's like, he's it's part of what keeps you scared. You know, yeah, you hey, got. I mean, that's what working harder. Yeah, than me, even like if when you don't, you're a hard worker. Yeah, if you don't have like a little bit of like you don't have a little bit of that, then you know, somebody's passing you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you live this truth of your words? You might not ever have another gig. You know, I hear about these actors and musicians sure. that. I don't experience that so much because I'm not making my living that mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that a real thing? Is it true for you? Well, I mean, I enjoy it in the moment, right? And I love what I get to do. But I went through a season where I had stopped playing music. And my wife and I had a business. We worked from home. And that was really just something like the Lord put on me. It was like, you're in the wrong place. It's time for you to do something different. And and really, that was at like a peak point in my career. I was in my later 20s. had been pursuing it for about 10 years. And like now we're on stage in front of 25,000 people. And I've got record labels. And I've got all these people kind of pursuing me. And I felt like it was not God's call for my life in that season. And I, I mean, obviously, that was like a difficult thing to say no to all those things. But I said, I said no in that season, not knowing when that would come back and if I would be playing again someday. And uh, <clears throat> and then the Lord like took us to India. My wife and I started a ministry. That whole thing. But um, I think part of the reason that like I had to lay that down for a season is that so like me pursuing a career wouldn't own me you know me being a musician and me all that kind of stuff that doesn't make me who I am yeah. it's a part of who I am yeah. but if tomorrow I woke up and couldn't sing am I still me right. right so like my identity you can't I can't it can't be so wrapped up in that that it destroys me as a person yeah. I'm sure it would be devastating to me because I enjoy it and love it so much but would it destroy my life no I would have to you know I'd still have to be myself and figure out a way to yeah your perspective of you I can't come up with the right words to say but isn't music it's a whole lot of other things yes and and music's a piece of it I think that's a great perspective for anybody listening to consider I I can fall into that trap a little bit sure in in my own life it's easy to do like I'm a cowboy, and yeah. If all of a sudden I never get to wear a cowboy hat again, yeah. Who am I now? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like, so yeah, it's a great way. Um, I appreciate identity is a really it's a it's a tough thing. That's one thing I think I do appreciate about people like Tom Morehouse. I don't think there's that that guy doesn't wake up and think twice about who he is every day. Yeah. He knows exactly who he is. That's right. And there is a day that comes when those guys can't climb on the back of a horse anymore. Mm-hmm. You know. But they're still the same person, yeah, that's you right. know. It hasn't. It doesn't derail them completely from yeah, their identity. Yeah, yeah. I heard a story because so Seth is Seth James is a good friend of mine, and his stepdad is Tom Morehouse, and so he grew up there, you know, different ranches that they were working and stuff like that. And I can't remember how he'd say it, but he said he said it'd be four in the morning. It's freezing cold outside, and you're on the back of a horse like long trotting across some pasture and he'd ride up next to you and be just hard as a coffin nail and look over to you say well he'd say i can't remember what it was he'd say something like was too hard for some men just right for me and then just keep riding (laughs) i mean you know 
That's that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's a mindset that's valuable. It, right I mean, that's one thing. Those guys, I think, I think Cowboys, <clears throat> and there's probably some correlation to it. Make really great like special force military guys because man, you just got to have your mind made up. Yeah, and they ain't no. There ain't no wavering in those dudes. My dad taught it to me like this. We lived in an old pier and beam house. Yep. And the sewer line busted. Mm-hmm. But we didn't call a plumber. Yeah. He opened that little crawl space and said, Now, son, nobody wants to do this, but we're about to do it. And that, that taught me something. It's like, oh, sometimes you just close your eyes say i'm going in and you get yeah that's right that's what tom was saying yeah you know what's hard yeah. for some men is just, just right, right for me <laughs> yeah that's a great one that's a great one <laughs> buster welch you know who that oh, is oh yeah mm-hmm. i went and worked on his ranch for, uh, with a, a guy billy alvin specifically oh by the way what was your uh gramps's name well his name was leslie hopkins but everybody called him hop all right. Uh, well, anyways, yeah. I wanted to bring. I just wanted to say his name. I think yeah. there's something about saying somebody's name. Yeah. It's I like to do it. Yeah. Oh shoot! What was I even talking about? Talking about Buster Welch. Oh yeah, name. Buster. So uh, yeah. Buster was like Tom in a way. Like you'd be riding all day and you're covering all these, and by the end of the day, like your tail's dragging. Mm-hmm. Buster just come be bopping by like he ain't even been doing anything. I know. And. The one story I thought was really cool is this guy I went with said, I caught Buster one time with his head down like he was hurting. I saw it. It was like a miracle. <laughs> you know, it was like, he became I, a real person. I'd never seen yeah. him like that before. Yeah. And then all the, one day I caught him. Anyway. I, that, I mean, they really cool. are like superheroes, especially that world. That, that, that cut of cowboys are just, they are, uh, I mean, they're, they're something Uncommon. to aspire to. You yeah, know, they really are. Yeah, well, and not absolutely. everybody's going to get a chance to what's, live that life. What's the old boy from the force? Boots O'Neill. Yeah, he? Boots. Yeah. Man, what a stud! <laughs> yeah. And his memory is so sharp. Even still, you know, he's he's getting on up there. Yeah, sure. But he can tell you, oh, 1936. I'll, you know, I mean, he can tell you exactly what he was I doing that day. I broke, man. That truck. Yeah, you know, whatever. yeah. They got him great. Memory. Yeah, it's unbelievable. There's something to that too. Yep. I mean, there's something to the longevity of having a mindset like that. I think it it makes you live a long time. Yeah, you're not looking for a finish line. You, yeah. you're just you're just here yeah. doing what you can every yeah. day, all day to be the best you. Yeah. Without some retirement. Yeah. Billionaire status, some yep. finish line yep. to get to. Yeah, so, like that boss of mine that I worked for, Dwayne Cannon. He he. Uh, He's got a ranch out in Coleman still. Still goes out there and works on it. He's retired, which I never thought he would do. Because he always told me, he said, boy, I'd rather wear out than rust out. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, uh, but he still, I mean, I hadn't, I mean, this 25 years ago yeah. that I worked for him. And he is exactly, he don't look like he's aged a day. Yeah. And same thing. It's just tough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm curious about. Okay, if you had asked me, mm-hmm. if somebody said, "Hey, when did when do you think Josh Weather started like playing music and stuff?" When did yeah. I would not have said nineteen. Yeah. Did you know you had music skills prior to that, or was it just like surprise? I'm awesome. You know, I I uh, I sang when I was in seventh grade. Uh, I sang in choir, and it was uh, choir was like a um, it was a uh, mandatory, whatever you class call it. or something. Yeah, yeah, you had to do it. Everybody had to do it. So you had to do choir for a semester, theater arts for a semester. Anyway, the choir teacher pulls everybody off, you know, one at a time down to the piano to sing a scale, da 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 da, da like that. And then she goes up an octave, da 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 da, like that, right? And you had to sing along with it. And I could just about sing like the whole scale of Every the piano, key. yeah. And she was like, "You can sing." And I was like, awesome. I mean, I didn't, that's <laughs> yeah. great. Cool. I'm always kind of hummed in my head, thought I could probably sing. And she she had me, she's like, you're, you're going to sing the solo in the program this year. And I sang like, I, I believe I can fly. That's yeah. what I sang. And then I really enjoyed that. So I, I, did, the, I did the talent show that year and sang um, Life's a Dance, that John Michael Montgomery song. Yeah, yeah. 
and a couple of buddies of mine and myself, we sang that song. And then, and then I didn't sing again. I, I played baseball. And then when we moved here to town, I, I rodeoed all through high school, rope calves and team rope. And, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do it again until, until my freshman year of college, I got really interested in music and I had, I had always loved music, but never like to the gr- degree like I thought I was going to do that. Yeah. And my dad would see something on TV. My dad sort of had like the insight. He knew, like Josh built for this, he could do that. He'd see somebody on TV and go, "You know, you could do that. You know, you could be doing that." Oh, wasn't that a subtle, great little confidence builder? Yeah. Like your dad's not telling you to do it. He just yeah. says, "Yeah, no, you could do that." Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and 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 when I was little, you know, growing up listening to the country music in the '80s and '90s. Because that's basically all we listened to. That and my dad would listen to like R and B music, so I was kind of like of both worlds. But I mean, my mom would dress me in starch breeches and a and a like a you know button up shirt and a straw cowboy hat and put a guitar in my hands and I would sing Amarillo by Morning in front of the fireplace when I was like five and six. <laughs> so first concert I ever went to when I was a kid was George Strait at the old uh, Rangers Ballpark. Not not. You know, there's been three. Yeah, the one so before the, the very first the ballpark one. in Arlington. Yes, the very yeah. first one. And it was George Strait and uh, Nolan Ryan pitched. Oh, wow. So I was always just sort of obsessed with Nolan Ryan and yeah. and George Strait. Especially being matter. a baseball player, you know. Oh, yeah, just eat up with Nolan Ryan. That's another guy. I mean, look at what that guy took a cowboy perspective to the baseball field he and just dominated did. everyone. Yeah. Dominated every to the point where no one will ever touch what he did on yeah, a baseball did you, field. Did you get to see that? Oh uh, yeah, documentary. Oh Jason yeah, Ryan? absolutely. Uh, he's a he's a cool guy. He's yeah, a really cool guy. He really is. I, I'd love to meet him someday. I don't know. He might be harder than a nail. Who knows? Well, he is. Yeah, yeah. he for sure is. <laughs> I'd be almost scared. They say don't meet your heroes. So yeah, you know. that's right. You, uh, you don't. <laughs> don't want to be let they down. They might disappoint you. Yeah. But <laughs> Uh, I've never met him, but something just tells me he's going to be like you, willing to say hi. And you know, sure. will, will you be best friends? No, yeah. probably not. Are you going to now hang out with him all the time? No, probably not. But a little interaction is still fun. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so I was sitting here thinking about uh, Highland cattle. <laughs> I mean, we are at the Texas Southwestern Cattle are, Raisers yes. Association. That's funny. <laughs> what gets you into Highland cattle? Oh, that's all my wife. That has nothing to do with me, <laughs> honestly. If we were going to raise something, to, I'd want to raise it to I could like raise it and eat it or raise it and sell it, one of the two. But right. you know what? There is money in the Highland cattle business right now. People are... They're cute. They're cute, and it's a thing, you know. It's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's a hobby, yeah. cattle raising thing, you know. We've got we bred one. Well, we we bought one that was bred, and so she just calved and had that baby, and that's the cutest. It looks like a little Ewok walking <laughs> around. Um, so I guess we've got what one, two, three. We've got a bull, two heifers, and a steer. Who's the steer is like a pet. I mean, he didn't even put him on a halter, walk him around. People took Christmas pictures with him and all yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah. And then we got this, like, elf cow. I don't even know what her deal is. She's some kind of weird breed of no-leg-having cow. I don't oh, even yeah, know. yeah, all body, no legs. Yeah. You know, there's pictures. I grew up on a Hereford ranch, registered Hereford, years ago, way back in, let's say, the 30s, 40s, 50s. They didn't have any legs either. They were just huh. super... Fat, yeah. short-legged. Yeah, that was the thing. I they, wonder what happened there. They just decided they wanted a different breed, so they started breeding for that. You know, somebody in the Highland inner circle or whatever yeah. might say someday we need more legs on these. So they just start selecting for the ones with legs, and hmm. next thing you know, next thing all you know, taller and longer. Wow, it's interesting. You know, uh, the the the. I mean, I don't, them those highlands do fine over here. You'd think they'd just about burn up in the winter, in the summertime, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe that hair's like insulate, Keep keeps them cool, cool and warm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably. It true. could be. I don't know. They they seem like they do fine. Vets don't like them. I know that. They don't, why you got these things down here? What's that, like? What's the reasoning for that? <laughs> they just don't want to be happy. <laughs> you know, some people <laughs> just don't want to be happy. That's you know, true. It's like, that's hey, true. Let's just choose to be happy. Oh, I get quite a few people that 
uh, so in my booth, I'm giving away those cornhole boards over there. Sure. People come by and they want these stickers so they can have a chance to win. Sure. Good luck. Follow <laughs> me on YouTube. Sure will. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where'd you meet your wife? How, uh, High how school. did that come together? So she's yeah. got you in the Highland cattle business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, it's always interesting to me how God leads us to our partners in life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so how did that happen for you? Um, she was a freshman in high school, and I was a junior. And you looking for this, too? Oh, we need more stickers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. No, you're fine. You're good. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, so she was a freshman in high school, and I was a junior, and uh, and we uh, we met rodeoing. We met at a rodeo team meeting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, I was just kind of smitten. She doesn't remember me from the first time we met, but uh, there was a couple other guys chasing her at the time. But I was like, <laughs> not happening, dude. Yeah, right. Yeah, and so I, yeah, we we met, started dating in high school, and then been together ever since yeah and isn't there isn't it i i, I knew my wife in high school mm-hmm. and i look at that and i thank god for it because i'm really not wondering much about her like i know her. yeah like i've known her my whole life basically. right yeah same so there's not some skeleton in a closet somewhere that someday somebody's gonna tell me that yeah. surprises me. yeah no yeah she yeah katie and i have now i guess been together longer then we've been apart from one another. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it and we're and we're still young, you know, so that's and I'm I'm so grateful because I know how rare that is nowadays that, you know, people are just yeah be bopping around with other folks and I'm just like, no, that's not my bag at all. It's not how it's meant to be. No. You know, I've been reading the Bible chapter at a time, just trying to get a better relationship with God or mm-hmm. even understanding of his word. And there's like there's some just blatant things in there that's like, hey, pick a partner. Now don't do that just randomly. See, that's yes. kind of the problem, I think. Yeah. Nobody nobody puts the right amount of work. Yeah. Into finding that. Yeah, yeah. Or then even to making it work afterwards. Yeah. So, anyways, if you're listening. The Bible says, do this well. It's going to be an important piece of yeah. your life. Yeah. Yeah, Solomon they, they would write. It's point. so funny. Solomon, the wisest person on earth, would write things like that. Yet he had like <laughs> hundreds of wives and concubines and all kinds of stuff going on. Do you think that's what gets people sideways with the Bible sometimes is the the feeling that it is contradicts it, so. yeah but i don't I, I think people do but they're not they're not chewing the meat and spitting out the bone you know they're not they're not seeing it for the truth that's there i mean i mean there's so many places i can look through scripture and see like which which people would look at like okay okay so like the story of sodom and gomorrah right the Lord says, I'm destroying this place. It's evil through and through. It's we got to toast this place. Right. <laughs> right. And he goes to Abraham, tells him he's going to do it because he's friends with Abraham. Right. And Abraham pleads with him to. <laughs> I roped with his son in oh, high school. Oh, there we go. Do what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's what happens in, you know, not to get off of Sodom and Gomorrah, but just sitting here, that's, it's just an illustration of the small world it really yes, is. You're yeah. Gonna, you just, if you're in this community, you're in ag, <laughs> uh, you just bump into people. Yeah. Shout out to Hunter Harris. There I we just go. saw your dad. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, Sodom and Gomorrah, so, so like, so the Lord says, I'm going to destroy this place. Well, so... We all, I mean, you know how the story goes. He goes in and decides he's going to save a lot in his family. He's going to he's going to appease Abraham and save a lot in his family, which he does. Except Lot's wife, who looks, you know, looks behind herself and right. watches the city. And I think I think I think there's something to that. Like the culture of that city had already ingrained itself so strongly in those people 
that they, you know, she was feeling for yeah. the city, right? She was like, and that she was not understanding, like, you, if God is this way, hell is that way, yeah. don't look that way. Yeah. But anyway, they, they get to the point where, you know, they're, they rescue them. Lot goes up into the mountains with his daughters, and his daughters make babies with him, get him wasted and make babies with him. Right? I mean, these are wild stories. Yes. Those, and which is not that, I mean, there's just not that many people on earth at this point. So it's like, it's probably slim pickings. But right. the, 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 the twisted culture of Sodom was in those people already. Like they had been so engulfed in that culture that, that they were so ingrained in their own flesh, fleshly desires that they would go so far to do that with their own father. Right? right? And they give birth to two babies, Moab. And Ammon, right, who become later the the nations of the Moabites and the Ammonites, who were also enemies of Israel all through Scripture. Moabites, Ammonites become enemies of Israel. Yeah. I mean, the Lord knew if we don't get rid of this place, it's going to create nations of people that are going to destroy you, my people. You right. are my person, Abraham. Your people are my people. If we don't get rid of this place, it's going to destroy you yeah. right it's going to it's going to hurt your people but god's grace is so good that he says okay right okay man i'm i'll do it now later in scripture like in second chronicles jehoshaphat is surrounded by the enemies of israel two of them being the moabites and the ammonites and he calls for a fast they say you know this prophet comes and says the lord says we need to send the worshipers out first which is a crazy battle plan they're outnumbered, like 10 to 1. They take their army out, and then they put the, the Levites and the worshipers out in front, and then it causes confusion against the, the Lord brings confusion against the enemy's camp, and they all decimate one another. Right. So, like, the Lord still took care of it, yeah. it generations it later. a little while. Yeah, but yeah. it's just like, he's like, you know, whereas people would see that as like, well, God was going to just destroy all these people. And I think that there is like type and shadow, especially in the old cat in the Old Testament, where it's like the the people are a depiction of us today, yeah. right? So like the Lord wants to get rid of the sin in you, because that sin in you is going to hurt you, His person. Yeah. It's going to hurt you. You know, there's like a whole metaphorical side to it, and people just they just choose to not see those things. Well, it's hard to see. Like you yeah. gotta work at it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta to, dig, you gotta, and you, you gotta, gotta say, I don't know everything. I think I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you gotta trust the Holy Spirit because He'll tell you. You know, He'll tell <laughs> so you like true. what you need to know about those things. Anyway, I love it. Thanks for my, uh, telling those stories. Thanks for giving us access to your understanding and, and <laughs> the fact that. Like, you can't tell those stories without having some serious time with the Bible yeah. and yeah. those well, that, things. That's part of that reason I had to step away from music for a season. I think the Lord had to do some shaping. And, and you know, like, I, I was telling a guy, a prospective manager, a guy who may be a manager for me, I just told him, you know, if I'd have said yes to the career that was laid out in front of me 10 years ago, so many life experiences, so many things I would have missed out on, you know, like going to India, experiencing all the things we have there. You know, we have we have a house, we have an apartment there. I go every year. We have friends and family there, basically, yeah. at this point, and 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 two hundred and eighty kids at a school over there. You know, I mean, we built a school from nothing. And like all those things, I would never have experienced, and those things shaped me, yeah. you know, as a person. You know, I, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, when you go, I tell this story all the time, but like, we went to a leper colony over there, and they introduced me as this a famous singer from America, yeah. <laughs> and there was this man, this old man there named Abraham. He was a Christian, which is pretty uncommon in India. Only two percent of the population is Christian. You need to hear that announcement. No. And so, anyway, he just decided that he wanted them to know that he was a singer as well. He wanted me to know that. And he said uh, to ask me to come over to where he was sitting. Now, this old man, 
Leprosy had already taken his vision to almost 100%. He had Coke bottle looking glasses on. He had no fingers. He had no legs, like past the knee. And he's sitting on the floor and he decides he wants to sing me a song in Telugu. So he sings this song. And it's, I'm sitting there next to him, just looking across at him. And he said, I want to pray for you. You know, and this all through translators. I said, okay. And he takes my hands and puts them, his hands look like this. And he takes my hands and puts them like this and puts them on his forehead and starts praying for me in Telugu. And he told me, he said, I want to pray for you because you have to go back to America. Your life is much harder than mine. My life is simple. Right. Your life is hard. And I just, oh my gosh. I mean, I sat there and just bawled like a baby. Yeah. Oh, that's my mom. Oh, hi, mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she doesn't need a sticker. <laughs> what are you looking for? I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Oh, she's just. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, okay, so real quick, let's talk about Love Like You Mean It. Sure. Uh, listeners may want to get involved if there's yeah. ways to be involved. Sure. So tell, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, you know, that's it's a pretty simple story. My wife and I took a trip to India in the process of adopting our first little girl from over there and uh, wanted to just kind of see what we were getting ourselves into. We went over there, and it just messed us up big time. I mean, just seeing the things we saw and experiencing the things that we did. Uh, we got back home and decided... My wife and I were laying in bed one night. She said, I think we should just start our own thing. I said, that's a good idea. We should do that, you know, someday in my head. I'm thinking someday. <laughs> and about a week later, she had already applied for the 501c3 and found us a partner over there with this guy named Ernest, who was the son of the pastor we had worked with on that first trip and that missions trip. And he and I become good friends. He's about the same age as me and super sharp guy. Came over here. He actually worked for a guy named Bobby Cox, who I don't know if you know the Cox family, but do they have a ranch out in Weatherford area? Yep. Mm-hmm. Roses. Yeah, Georgia. Roses. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So he yeah, worked. I'm familiar with Yeah. Him. Yeah. So Bobby, um, Ernest worked for him and, um, you know, went to Harvard. Super sharp guy. And anyway, went back to India waiting on ministry. Thought like God had called him to go back and, and do ministry. And so a couple of weeks after he'd been there, he met us. And then sometime later, Katie decides he needs to be our partner. She reaches out to him. He said, yes. And then the process of us building a school was kind of underway. And, you know, that process first takes money. So it was raising money. Well, I had taken a step away from playing music, so I hadn't played in about a year and a half. She said, why don't you just put online that you're going to play 10 acoustic house shows for 3000 bucks a piece. And when we get the, when we get all so, 10 of them sold, then we'll have 30 Gs. And once we got the 30 Gs, we can buy this three-acre piece of land that we've been looking at. It was a cornfield in the middle of nowhere, and she did that, made a post on Facebook, and in 90 minutes, we had $30,000 in my PayPal account. These people oh, were all man. willing to prepay. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, and then we just, and then that was it. It was like, well, okay, we're back to doing this, and, you know, fast forward, about a year and a half later, we'd raised a million dollars just doing that, going out and talking about it, telling the story, and. We built a school, basically looks like a big apartment complex over there, and, you know, that school's now exploded since COVID. We, st- we opened it during COVID, and, uh, yeah, there's 280 students and 12 full-time teachers and three buses and schedules and all kinds is of stuff. Is water hard to come by over Water there? is hard to come by, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so wells. We've done a lot of wells over yeah. there. Yeah, and we did, we did those early, like, building rapport with the community out there. Because we were the first white folks they'd ever seen. Sure. They'd never seen white folks. And, they, I mean, it's like stepping back into the Bible when you walk over there, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Houses made out of stone, like just a just Dirt a square house. And, yeah. 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 Oh, boy, more stickers. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Follow me on YouTube. Right. That's the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool, awesome. Well, that's just been a great journey into your life. Yeah, and things you it's think a lot about. to talk about, huh? It yeah. is a lot to talk about. Yeah. I'm sure we had, I mean, that's just kind of a pinprick, really. Yeah, into, we should do it again. Into we'll all the things you do. Yeah. By the way, I want to say thanks for all the covers. You're oh, yeah. On oh, yeah. Oh, that's a whole nother I'm, crazy I'm God really thing right there, man. I enjoy that, though. You know, I, I, had, I had looked at... Um, making the transition to kind of more traditional country music, uh, maybe about 
six, eight months ago, my wife and I have been talking about it, and she's always told me, always, you should be making country records. You know, you ought to be making country music. You know, Cody Johnson, he's doing great. Well, what great. did you make prior to that? Well, I mean, it was not necessarily like straight-ahead country. It was like... It Josh was, Weathers. Yeah, it was like Americana. It was more like John Mellencamp. You know, maybe something like that. A little yeah. more rock and roll edge to it. And, uh, and anyway... I just decided one day I was going to start putting videos on Instagram every day, and I did a couple, and then I sang a Merle Haggard song. I sang Silver Wings, and that one went kind of crazy, and so I was like, I'm going to stick with this country thing, and decided I'd stick with 80s, 90s country, because that's like what I'm most familiar with. That's like the, my sure. wheelhouse. I mean, me too. I sure. Mean, it's the best that's music. That's every it's one just... of them you sing, I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> me and my wife will be laying there. Sometimes, you know, you don't get a whole lot of time to just be a couple you know yeah, so we're, yeah. we're laying in bed and she'll just be scrolling through your story <laughs> and we'll just be listening to you say, i mean that's a nice thing you do for us oh I mean, well i mean and probably a lot of people so that's well, so funny keep that's, doing it well I thanks is what I'm yeah saying. i will i will it's been it's uh, ultimately i mean it has changed my life yeah. in the last two months because the consistency of doing that every day has now, I mean, I went from, I think, 12,000 followers on Instagram to now 68,000 followers on Instagram. And then TikTok, I didn't even have a TikTok two months ago because I thought, you know, I'm 40 and I don't know how to twerk. I don't belong <laughs> yeah, on TikTok, right? right? So, right. but my wife said, just send me those videos. I'm going to start your TikTok and I'll start posting them every day. And yeah. so everyone she posts, or everyone I post, she posts, and we literally do it every day. And we went from zero to now like 105,000 followers on TikTok in two months. Yeah. Which now is in turn caused Nashville is paying attention. And I've. Are you getting some phone calls? Yeah, I spent all week in, La- in Nashville last yeah. week. Yeah. But it's been really good. I mean, it's it's funny, all those things. I mean, it's just the Lord doing yeah. what he does. I mean, I, all those things I said no to they're years ago, back. they're back yeah. like tenfold, you know, more than they were before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, I hope that all works out just yeah, the way God wants it to. Yeah, me I too. I mean, I'd say you, but I think it's better if you give God the the kind of lead position <laughs> always man i mean that's just the way my wife and i we've just kind of chosen to live that way where like you know i think there's a significant difference between jesus being your savior and then jesus being the lord of your life you know because he calls himself a lord and savior yeah right so when he becomes the lord of your life you're no longer at the steering wheel. He is. Yeah. But he does know and care about the desires of your heart, you know? So he sure. wants to see those things come to pass just like you do. But it may happen in his timing, which not may not be the same as yours. But Jesus doesn't belong in the trunk, and he doesn't belong in the back seat. And he, you know, the trunk, you'd pull him out when you need him. That's yeah, where he is right. when he's in the oh, trunk. Look, let me get yeah. the Bible out of the trunk. Yeah, that's see. right. It's where he belongs. You know, he's the, he's the spare tire or the, yeah. the wrench. But if you put him in the driver's seat, I mean, your car rarely breaks down. Yeah, it's pretty totally. amazing. I think everybody listening has been here before. Like sure. you wanted this thing to happen, mm-hmm. written it, and it didn't. Yep. And a year or two later, you're like, "Damn, I'm really glad that didn't happen." Yeah. That's worked out so much better. Uh-huh. And you just answered one of my questions, which is, "Why aren't you a megastar?" Uh-huh. Because <laughs> you chose yeah. to go about life in a different way. And now there's a good chance you're going to be a megastar and you're going to get, get to have that platform for the right thing. Yeah, know? it's possible. You know, yeah. I mean, Lord willing, that would happen. And that that's, that's really it, that I know, inherently I know, that if fortune and fame became a part of, you know, our life, um, that it is for the greater purpose of, you know, it's just easier for Zach Brown to raise a million dollars than it is me. Yeah. Sure. You know, he can snap his fingers. I mean, in that. And then there's also sacrifice that comes with that because 
let's say that happens. Mm-hmm. You don't get to walk in here and have this little podcast with me. I mean, we can't just we just can't do it because it, I bet all, you could do it in this room. Well, I bet maybe. you could do it because there's too many guys in here to be like, I ain't gonna mess with him. We ain't gonna bother him. Right, <laughs> but you gotta kind of sneak you in here. Yeah, maybe. You know. I mean, Cody Johnson probably well, could not okay, walk yeah, in imagine here. Imagine if George uh, George Strait. Oh gosh, you couldn't do it. No. Yeah, and George is kind of part of this community. Yeah. I mean, he's. There's a lot of people in there he knows have roped with him at a round robin mm-hmm. or this different thing. You Anyways, rope, don't you? Yeah, or yeah, I did. I really don't anymore. Now it's just mostly working cattle. Matter yeah. of fact, if you ever want to, I'd love to invite you to come brand some cattle. Oh, with us. I'd come love out and that. Help us gather and we'll yeah. bring some calves. We'll, yeah, hook we'll it bring up some cameras. <laughs> yeah, bring some cameras. We'll do some fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. It's one of in those Cranfields? Things. That's where uh, you're at? No, Cranfields Gap? Comanche. Oh, okay. So just went uh, east of Brownwood a little bit. Okay. Anyway. Oh, more stickers. Here we go. <laughs> you going to follow me on YouTube? All right. Good deal. All right. Take one. You're welcome to them. And look at that T-shirt so you know what the numbers are on the on the cap. Josh, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate, appreciate it. you. We're coming to the show tonight. Yeah, We're looking forward excited. to it. That's great. And, uh, you guys have seats on the yep, floor? Yeah. Okay, we cool. We got us a table. We're bringing awesome. a bunch of friends. Yeah. And so it'll well, be a I'll good put deal. you some badges um, at the at the will call, so you can come backstage. Okay, have you ever been backstage at Billy Bob's? Uh, n- uh, no, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> I did get to walk backstage at the Grand Ole Opry. Once, oh, that's cool. Pretty cool. That is cool. And, uh, I went there for the first time last week. Yeah, yeah. Didn't get to go backstage. Didn't go near the stage. We were in the nosebleeds. Well, watching. See, my wife worked out here, and she pitched songs. In, really, in her career in yeah. Nashville. In Nashville for Don Light. Like wow. She loves Don Schlitz. Like, she can tell you people that wrote the song before yeah. she can tell you who sings yeah. it. Like, yeah. So she's fun. What year What years was this that? This would have been in... 90s? 96 to 2002, something like that. Wow. Her I sister wonder. had a record deal. She was out here in the business. Carrie was singing and... So she knew a few people. Wow. When we got to go backstage Grand Ole Opry. It was I wonder, did she work for a publishing company there? Yeah, uh, Don Light Publishing. Uh, Don, okay, yeah, yeah. Awesome. You know how she got that job? No. It's a great story. She walked in and said, I, I want to work for you, but I know you've got no reason to hire me, so let me take out the trash for free and yep. just be in here. Cowboy perspective. And they let her. <laughs> <laughs> and then one day she said, Don got me a, me- uh, a meeting with every... What do you call them? The guys that decide the music in the industry. Follow me on YouTube. Yeah, All right. And if you can get a second meeting, you're hired. And she got a second meeting with every one of them. So she pitched wow. songs for two or three years there. Wow. Any uh, hits that she's connected to? Any I'd songs? Have, that we'd have to ask her. I'm sure there are several yeah. of them. But that's kind of where I fail. Well, I don't keep up with all sure. that. She's got all that information just like at the ready all the time. Mm. And she'll she'll get me and the girls listening to songs nobody really knows of that are just awesome. Yep. They're just some wrong songwriter song that never got cut by yep. the right person. Yep. It's cool. Well, I'll meet her tonight. Oh, yeah. Did we meet at Cranfield's Gap? Yeah, you pro- I don't know. If I don't think so. Not. She's got long black hair, pretty tall, 5'8 or so. We'll come behind. We'll come, yeah, yeah. We'll come see yeah, you. Come, come see me. All right. Uh, well, man, is really good. Thanks man. for your time. Yeah, Glad thanks for having me. Glad to catch up. Glad to share the perspective you have with my listeners and, and everybody. Go check out Josh Weathers on social. <laughs> go to his website. You can go to his next show. Help this guy be the next big thing. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, all right. Later. (laughs) Thanks.